All right. Uh, this is for the sub. Go ahead and uh, pass out the uh, classworks for the day, and then at the end of the video, you'll pass out the homeworks, or you can have the TAs do it as well. So uh, this would be a good time to do that. And you guys should have uh, the homework finished as well, so we're going to correct that next time. Or you can go onto Canvas and correct it as well. But uh, just know that if you want the answers, you can go to Canvas and get those sooner rather than later. Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to go over uh, finding angle measures in triangles and similar triangles. Let's look at some things that you need to know from the last lesson. Angles that lie in the same line are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees and have a common vertex. Vertical angles have the same measure. If two lines are parallel and they are intersected by a transversal, then corresponding angles at the points of intersection have the same measure given two lines. If a third line cuts through both lines so that the corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Not only that, but you should know the following. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is a straight angle, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. The sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. And finally, the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent angles. We'll talk about that in a moment. For now, though, we need to solve for the missing angle in this triangle. We'll do this one together, and then we'll give you guys a chance to do it uh, on your own, and then we'll go over it as well. So as we stated already, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, and these three are all all interior so they all add up to 180 degrees so we can write an equation to reflect the words so we can see we've taken all three of these angles added them together and it equals 180 we're solving for the missing angle though specifically x or the value of x in this equation so let's combine like terms that gives us 80 right here and now we have 80 degrees plus x equals 180 degrees. Some of you can do this in your head. Others of this of us need to do the work on this. But when we solve the equation by subtracting 80 on both sides, we find that x equals 100. So we could write that in here that the angle there is 100 degrees. That would be our answer. All right, you guys take a moment and try this one out, and then we'll do it together. All right, well, the sum of these three angles should be 180, so let's get an equation to show that. Now, I know some of you guys are going to add that 90 and 57 and subtract it from 180. You can do that, all right, but this is formally how it should be done. We should write the equation and then we should solve for x because by now we should be pretty proficient at solving an equation. Um, that means we should be pretty good at this by now. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. So I've added the 90 and 57. 
Then I'll subtract 147 from both sides. And that gives us x is 33. You can put degrees on there if you want. In addition to this, though, some of you may be wondering how we got this 90 here. Well, uh, we get that 90 from this angle right here in the green. If you can't see that, we shaded that box in. We know that if it's boxed like that, that, that angle is 90 degrees. So that's where that 90 degrees comes from. All right, take a moment and try this one. This one may be a little bit more tricky, but if we write the equation, hopefully it will make itself clear. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write the equation for this. Hopefully you guys have had enough time to finish. If not, you may ask the sub to pause the video. So right here I have S plus S plus 30. Those are the three interior angles of this triangle. That equals 180. Now if I combine like terms on this one, I'm not going to have a number, but rather a variable that I'm going to combine from these two S's. And that's exactly how many I have. I have two S's. And then, of course, I have the plus 30 equals 180. So now I need to get the S's by themselves by subtracting 30 from both sides. And 180 minus 30 is 150. And finally, to solve this thing, I'm just going to divide both sides by 2, which will give me 1S. So you can see here the 2's cancel out, which would give me the 1S. And we see that S now equals 150 divided by 2 is 75. So that'd be 75 degrees here and here. You can put marks on those if you want to annotate that they are the same. 75 degrees for both. Alright, that takes us to number four. Go ahead and just use what you know about triangles, the interior angles, and straight angles to solve this problem. All right, so we're going to go over how hopefully most of you guys found this, uh, and that would be by taking, I'm not going to use X, but I know if I add all three of the interior angles, we have this unknown one, which we can just make uh, Z, I guess. So if I add all three of those angles together, I'd get 180 degrees. That gives me this equation. Now when I add the 48 and 24, so now to solve for Z, I'll subtract 72 from both sides. And that will tell me what Z is. Now Z is not the angle that we want from this. 
Z is the angle that is in a straight relationship with the X there. So looks like Z is about 108 degrees right here. So what I would recommend doing now is just ignoring the rest of this chart except for the two angles and the intersection. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of this other stuff. And the reason I do this is because it may be helpful for us to see that that now is completely a straight relationship. It, gave, it gives us a straight angle between the two of them, or a straight line. So now what I'm going to do is if I take x and plus z, I would get 180 degrees. The problem here, and is a good problem, is that we know what z is. Z is 108 degrees, we know that from down here. So I've just replaced Z with the value we have for it, and now I'm just going to solve for X by subtracting 108 on both sides. And we can see here that X is 72 degrees. Now you may be wondering, because some of you have noticed already, that it's the same 72 that we had right here. Well, if we go back to the picture, why are these two numbers the same? Well, if we go back to the original picture here, uh, and we look at just the triangle, right? The triangle gave us 48 plus 24 plus the Z equals 180, right? But on the other hand, X plus Z is 180. And hopefully you guys have seen now that See how we have the z, we have a plus z equals 180, and then plus z equals 180. Well, something plus the same thing gives us 180. So we can see that x is really just the sum of these two numbers. And I kind of mentioned that before, but um, that's what we call, uh, these two are remote interior angles, and they equal this one exterior angle. I don't, I don't know if there's an exact theorem or property that's named for this, but uh, that's how that works, is this one angle, one exterior angle, is equal to the two remote interior angles. I don't know if the markings help or not, but hopefully that helps you understand why that works. So we don't actually have to do that twice like we did. If we just add these two angles here, then we'll have the one exterior angle here. All right, this one should be on the next page. Take a moment, see if you can do it, and we'll give you a couple minutes to try this one out. All right, so let's, let's look here. Uh, there's a few things we need to realize is that if we ignore that middle line right here, then we have a big triangle, right? And not only do we have this big triangle, but we also have this 90-degree angle right here. But that 90-degree angle has been cut, right? Uh, for example, we have that 64-degree angle right here. Uh, but not only that, uh, we can see that if, 
if we look at these two angles right here, that they are in a straight relationship. It's a straight angle there. And so if we just solve for x, we can do that right now by ignoring all the rest of the picture. So being able to do this where we focus just on little parts of the pictures is kind of key because we're breaking up a big problem into smaller problems, which hopefully are a little bit more solvable as well. So right here I have x plus 121 equals 180 because it's a straight line. And what this will do is it'll give me the value of that x angle, which will allow me to solve for the other angles. We'll see how to do that here in a moment. But I would need to subtract 121 from both sides of this equation. And we can see right here that x is 59 degrees. So let's go and bring back the rest of that picture. And I've replaced x with that 59 degrees. Now there's another angle we can solve for here, and I kind of talked about it. With that 90 degree angle, it's been split up. One of those parts of that 90 degree angle is 64 degrees. So we have a complementary relationship between that 64 degrees and that other missing angle. Now we don't have to find it necessarily because it didn't ask us to, but we can solve for it if we want. And I'm going to just because it's good practice. Now once again, one of the nice things about solving for this angle is that we can focus just on the intersection of these three lines. So how would I solve for this missing angle right here? Well, uh, and I guess we can name that angle uh, T. So if we wanted to solve for T right here, uh, we can add those two together and that would equal 90 degrees because they're complementary. So here's the equation I have. And to solve for T, I would subtract 64 from both sides of the equation in order to have T by itself. And there we go, we have T is 26 degrees. So I can replace that in the picture now as well. And there we go, T is 26 degrees, so I've replaced that in the picture as well. Now this is helpful because we can solve for W and Y separately by using the triangles. Uh, you could also use the remote interior angle uh, property, I guess, that we just went over by knowing that W plus that 26 degrees is that exterior angle here, that 59 degrees. But I would actually figure that most of you are going to focus on the two separate triangles. So let's solve for W by just focusing on this one triangle. Again, this is a problem solving strategy, solving a simpler problem amongst a very large problem, so we're kind of simplifying it. So there's our new triangle. Let's go ahead and add up all three of these angles and it would equal 180. And let's combine like terms. And then let's solve the equation by subtracting 147 from both sides of the equation. So this stuff cancels out and we're left with W is 33 degrees. So I'll go ahead and go in here and replace W with that 33 degrees and that solves that angle right there but we had one more angle in that other triangle to solve for so this is where we are now and we just need to solve for y there and again we can erase the rest of this stuff and focus just on the triangle itself so now we have something like this and of course when we add all three of the angles we should get 180 giving us this equation and we'll just solve this directly now. And there we have y as well. So there is the complete figure with all the missing angles. Now some of you would have maybe used these three angles to solve for this missing one, but it's not really going to matter. Something else you may want to realize is that if I add this 33 plus the 26, I do get that exterior angle right there as well. All right, you guys try out this one. Just solve for E and F. And we'll show you the answers to this one.
All right, and there's the work for E. Let's do the work for F real quick. And there's the work for F. Notice when I solve for F, I use those remote interior angles, 21 and F. When I add them, I should get that 64 as well. So maybe that was a little bit faster. However you did it is fine. Uh, as long as you got that 43 degrees, you could have taken 180, minus 116, minus 21, and gotten 43 as well. All right, here's the next problem. There's plenty of information here to solve for all the missing values. So good luck, and uh, we'll show you guys some tricks on how to solve this one here in a moment. All right, in looking at this diagram, there's one angle specifically that is very, very easy to find because there's no solving. All we've got to do is know about the relationships. And that would be a vertical angle. Again, if we just focus on an intersection here, and I'm focusing on this one, here we have this 95 degree angle. If we go through the vertex, we find a vertical angle, R, which is 95 degrees as well. That's not 950, that's 95 degrees. Now if we stick with this intersection here, we can see that T and 95 degrees, however you look at it, is uh, 180 degrees. So I've kind of moved it so we're just focusing on that straight line and we take T plus the 95, that should equal 180. So now to solve for T, we'd subtract 95 from both sides. And it looks like that would give us T is 85 degrees. So T is 85 degrees, let's fill that in. So going back to our original drawing, there's our 85 degrees. But S also is vertical with the T, so it also is 85 degrees. And that should help us a lot in terms of finding P. Uh, not necessarily Q, though, yet. But if we do focus on Q, let's just look at the intersection once again. So here we have a straight angle that's been split up into two separate angles. So if we add them together, we should get 180. And to solve for Q on this one, simply, we just need to subtract 154 from both sides of the equal sign. So now we have Q equals... 26 degrees. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Q is 26 degrees. All right, let's go back to the original problem, looking at the full diagram. So we have something like this. Let's go ahead and solve then for angle P here. But how would we do that? Well, there's a couple ways we can. We have this external angle here, which we could use, or we could use the triangle. Generally, most people use the triangle, so I'm going to let you do that. You'd add 95 and 26, subtract that sum from 180. But I like this exterior angle stuff with the remote interior angles. So I know if I take P plus the 26, I should get the 85. Again, this comes from our two interior or remote interior angles, and they should add up to this one exterior angle. So now I'm just going to solve this equation by subtracting 26 from both sides. 
And right here I get 59 degrees, so that P would be 59 degrees. All right, you guys take a moment and solve for B and C on your own. I'll give you a couple minutes. And there's the word for the answers. So if you guys have questions on how any of this was done, uh, maybe good for you to ask a neighbor on this one, okay? But keep the noise levels down, all right, so that people can learn. All right, to solve this one, we may have to look back at one lesson there. Uh, we know that P and Q, those two lines, are parallel. So what does that tell us about corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles as well? Uh, we should know something about those angles in order to solve for the rest of these. Well, hopefully you figured it out. All of those relationships are going to be congruent. And not only that, but all vertical angles are already congruent. So if we look at these, we can write in three of these angles already right now without calculating anything, just because we know that those types of relationships give us congruent angles. Bam, there we go. Three down. What do we got? Four more to go? That's not too bad. So on the other hand, we can see that line P gives us a straight angle with those three angles right there. So if I wanted to solve for angle 1, what I would do is add all three of those angles and it should equal 180. So there's my equation. If I want to solve for angle 1, I'll combine the two like terms here. So that gives me 112 plus angle 1 equals 180 and it's all for angle 1 I'll subtract 112 from both sides of the equal sign and that gives me angle 1 is 68 degrees so let's go ahead and fill that in 
we'll need that moving forward. Now angle 1 is not vertical with angle 2 because they're not congruent. And the angle that is vertical with angle 2 has been split up into two different angles. So if we add up both of these angles right here, these two, that would give us a vertical angle pair with angle 2. So if I take the 68 and add it to 45, I get 113 degrees. So this angle also is 113 degrees. This angle which is alternate interior with angle 2 is 113 degrees. And angle 6 which is vertical to angle 4 must also be 113 degrees. All right, you guys try this one out. See what you can do. Remember, the two lines, S and T, are parallel. That will be crucial in order for solving for some of these missing values. All right, there are your answers. Take a moment, look at those, see how you did. Now you should have some questions on some of these. For example, angle 7. How did we get 132? Well, once we figure out angle 1, which is 70 degrees, how do we know that it's 70 degrees? Because it's alternate interior with angle 5, which is a straight angle with that 110 degrees. So knowing that angle 1 and the 62 degree angle are alternate interior with angle 7 
tells us that they are the same. So I just did 62 plus the 70 degrees, which is angle 1, in order to find that it was 132 degrees. Some of you probably have questions on angle 4 as well. Well, angle 4 and the 62 degree angle are alternate interior with 110 degrees. So these two angles have to be equal 110 degrees as well. So I did 110 minus 62, and that gave me the 48 degrees for angle 4. The rest of these just come from angle relationships or straight angle relationships. All right, uh, this is a tessellation. It's not important that you know what a tessellation is. It's just when you take one shape and move it around. Sometimes you flip it or rotate it. doesn't matter. But this part of the page is for eighth grade. And so it just may be helpful for you to see. In chapter 11, we learned that if one figure can be carried on to another by a series of rigid motions and dilations, then the two figures are similar. In the picture above, triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2. Describe the sequence of transformations that will carry triangle 1 onto triangle 2. And what is the scale factor? Well, a dilation would work. Uh, you could do one dilation depending on where the center of dilation is. But, uh, that's not completely crucial. I, I think if we use that as the center of dilation, uh, we would do it in one transformation. However, most people would say that it's a translation and then a dilation, which would work as well. The scale factor from 1 to 2, though, is 2, because we can see that this side length, it takes two of those to get this side length. So triangle 2 is twice as big. That's the scale factor. And that's something you guys can do in 7th grade. On the other hand, we have triangle 2, which has been changed into triangle 3. So, uh, when we look at this, we have to see that we have this green angle here and this one. So, clearly there's some type of uh, rotation or reflection that's taken place. So, some of you may say reflection and then reflection and a dilation. Others of you would say a rotation and then a dilation. And maybe even a translation is in there somewhere. But, uh, for the scale factor, though, we can see that Triangle 3 is half as big. In terms of area, it's a fourth, so clearly the scale factor would be one half. So below is another fact about similar triangles. Given two triangles, if the corresponding angles have the same measure, then the triangles are similar. So if two triangles have corresponding angles that are the same, then one triangle can be mapped onto the other using transformations. Therefore, the triangles are similar. And do all three pairs of corresponding angles have to be congruent in order to say that the two triangles are similar? Uh, yes, for triangles specifically, yep. If only two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, they're still similar because it causes that third uh, pair of angles, corresponding angles, to be congruent as well. So they would also be similar so in terms of similarity, if we find that two of the angles are, sim are congruent, rather, I apologize, then we know that that third angle is also congruent. Therefore, the two triangles are similar. So these two are similar because we have the two 114-degree angles and the two 29-degree angles. So automatically, this third one would be, sim would be congruent as well. Well, what about these two? On the surface, these two look like they are not similar because we do have the 66 degrees. But these two appear to be different. And they are different. The problem is, is if we solve for the missing angles, this one's 64 degrees. This one is 50 degrees. So as it turns out, they are similar.
So now that we know that, we're going to have to use the same type of strategy to solve these ones to see if they're similar or not. So we just got to solve for the missing angles. Now they are close, but they are not exactly the same. 53 and 56 are different, and 34 and 37 are different, therefore these two triangles are not similar. They do have one angle that's the same, but the other two are not. So here we do have three triangles, and we just got to figure out if there are any two triangles that are similar. So take a moment, think about that. You may want to solve for some of the missing angles here. All right, so let's look at some of these missing angles. All right, so there are missing angles. Now on the surface, you're going to say that there's not any two triangles that are similar, but there is. Uh, let's look first at this triangle here. This one we've got 20, 65, 95. And there we have that one. But there's another triangle that does have the same measurements. Let's go and take a look at that one. And there it is. Now again, if some of you see, if we get rid of that line, we see we have those two angles, and what do they add up to? 95 degrees. So that corresponds with this angle. The two 20 degree angles correspond, and the two 65 degree angles also correspond with each other. Therefore, these two triangles are similar. All right, take a moment and figure this one out. This one clearly has two similar triangles because we have these two vertical angles which are congruent. And since we already have these 42 degree angles which are congruent, automatically we know that this third angle also would be congruent to this third angle. Therefore, these two triangles are similar. All right, now again, gave us some crucial information here at the beginning. Line L and line M are parallel. So we know that corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Same with alternate exterior angles and alternate interior angles. Vertical angles are always congruent. And straight angles add up to 180.
All right, so this one does have two similar triangles. We've got this triangle here, and these two angles are congruent because of the corresponding angles of the parallel lines, and then these two angles are also congruent because of the parallel lines, and they share one angle here at the top, so really what we end up with is a smaller triangle here, and then again if we just ignore that line in the middle, then we also have this big triangle here, and yes they do share that purple angle there, so that's about how it would look, something like this, just if we were looking to color code this thing, okay? So there are two similar triangles because all three angles are congruent that are corresponding. All right, you guys, that's it for this lesson. Go and have the teacher, uh, the substitute, rather, pass out the homework for you. Uh, if, if you guys need to, I'm going to put this lesson on Canvas once I get back so you guys can watch it over and over and enjoy it for the rest of your lives. So, yes, it will be on my YouTube channel. So, good luck with that, you guys. We will see you next time. Good luck.